Critter. Hello, adventurers. In this video, I will share with you all that you need to know to conquer the tallest peak in Jeju, Halasan. I'll go through with you the best time and the best route to climb the mountain, how to book the permit, how to get to the trailhead, and what you can expect along the way. Stick with me till the end to find out how to get a certificate for finishing your climb. Let's begin. The mountain is open all year round, but there are some months that are more preferable for hiking up. I climbed Halasan in early spring in the middle of March, and I was actually quite disappointed. Firstly, it was frustratingly dangerous. The icy steep slopes were very slippery because the snow hasn't cleared yet. The temperature was also not the most pleasant. And I was also bummed because the mountain flowers have yet to bloom. Learning from my bad experience, the best time to climb will be in the middle of spring in April or in the late autumn in October. This is when the trail will be the safest, the weather the most comfortable, and the spring blooms or the autumn colors will be the loveliest. Now, let me give you an overview of the two main trails that will bring you up to Halasan. Sungpanak and Gandumsa. The most significant difference between them is the higher elevation gain at Gandumsa. Many parts of the trail are very steep, making it very challenging to climb. Next is the views. Personally, I find Ganumsa to be more scenic. There were more viewpoints and nice bridges. In comparison, the Sungpanak Trail is mostly forested until the last stretch where you will be able to see the horizon. To get the best of both worlds, I recommend climbing up via Sungpanak and climbing down via Ganumsa. Not only you will save about 50 stories of climbing, the permit is easier to get and you get to see everything. The worst thing to happen on a hiking trip is reaching the trailhead, then having to turn back just because you don't have the permit to climb. To avoid this mistake, before your hike, go to Visit Hala website to book your hiking permit. The website is in Korean, so if you're like me and you can't read Korean, you can open using Google Chrome browser, right click on the page and select translate the page to English. If you're wondering why I don't just use the drop down on the top right corner, it didn't work. After selecting the trailhead, the date, and a number of people, click reserve. Past this step, you will need to do an email verification. Enter your email address, then check your inbox for the activation code. Once verified, you will see a bigger page. Select a time slot for your hike. This part is very important if you want to reach the summit. To avoid people being stuck in the mountain after sunset, the trail management enforce checkpoints that blocks people from going further past a certain timing. For example, in spring, if you're not at this checkpoint by 12.30, the gate will be blocked and you're not allowed to continue to summit. There are also public broadcasts at the summit to inform people that they need to start their descent. To successfully summit, I've taken into account the hiking duration. You will need to start your hike within this timing. The permit booking is free of charge. Once the booking is successful, you'll receive this booking confirmation email. Take note of this line that says QR. On click, it will open your permit QR code that you will need to get through the electronic gate at the trailhead. If you find this helpful so far, please leave a like on this video so that others can find it more easily. On to the most important part, how to get to the trailheads. If you're planning to take the public bus to get to the Gandumsa trailhead, depending from where you start, you will likely need to take a bus to the Sanchondan University, then transfer into bus 475. Get off here, then look for the visitor center. To get to the Songpanak trailhead, take bus 181 or 281. Get off here, then look for the visitor center. The earliest buses are scheduled to arrive at the trailheads around 6.30 to 7. So it's very feasible to take the bus to get to the trailhead in time. If you're planning to drive, parking lot is limited, so you'll need to come earlier to have a place to park. You can also just take the taxi here. You can flag a taxi on the street, but to skip all the trouble of communicating Hello. in Korean, I used a taxi hailing app called Kakao Taxi. 
The app I've been using to show the navigation preview is called Naver. Google Maps doesn't really work well in Korea. I will leave the important URLs in the description below. Now, in just 50 seconds, I will show you what 9 hours of hike look like. You know why you can't find any pork or any lard in this mountain? Hala san. Yes. <laughs> did it. Now, let me show you how to get the summit certificate. When you reach the summit, take a photo with your smartphone that has internet access. A photo of anything will do, but it has to carry location data within one kilometer of the summit. Next, use your phone to visit this URL. Enter your permit number and attach your summit photo. On success, you receive a confirmation number. Copy this because you will need it later. You only need to do this once for all the hikers within the same permit. After finishing your hike, look for this booth to print your certificate. Inside the booth, tap on certificate printing, enter your confirmation number, and make payment of 1000 won per certificate and print. Ta-da! You are summit certified. Do you want to learn how to take the public transportation in Jeju? Well, my next video is about that. Subscribe so that you don't miss it. If it's already out, I'll put it right here. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video. Whew, we thought that we were gonna meet our creator. Creator. <laughs>